Hi everyone, this week's project, we're making some bunting. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a new project. Today we're making some bunting. So I'm going to use some leftover scraps to make my outer and I've already cut my lining um, out of a different fabric. You can use like nice fabric for both sides, but it's a little bit more economical if you use something sort of plain for the back sometimes. So I'm just gonna line it up to my top edge and pin it in place. all pinned in place I am going to cut out so as always when we're cutting try and do nice long strokes it makes your edges much neater out. I am going to pop my pattern to one side. I've got my fabric facing right side up. I'm going to add my lining so that it is right side down. I'm going to pin along the two long angled edges and then I'm going to go and sew those on the machine. Today I'm on a different machine. My regular machine is out for servicing. So I'm just going to line up and again I've got my needle in the left hand position and the edge of my foot is um, at the one centimeter seam allowance. So I'm just going to get started just a little or a bit of a reverse there at the beginning. machines are more of a mechanical machine than my usual digital machine, so it's a little noisier. It's worked great in my machine for forever. Okay, I'm just coming down to the point, um, and so what I want to do is I want to finish up at the point where the seam allowance is one centimeter on this side and one centimeter on this side. So I'm just going to come down a little bit to where I think is about the right spot and then I'm going to check by lifting my presser foot and spinning. So clearly I'm not at the right spot because this is still about half a centimetre out. So I'm going to lift up, reposition myself, lower my presser foot. I'm just going to hand crank it forwards a few. And by hand crank I mean using the big turn uh, on the side of your machine. It allows you to operate your machine manually. lined up much better. My lining fabric itself is a little smaller than my outer so I'm just going to line up my outer. Keep it all flat. One downside of this machine is it's missing its front section here um, which means I don't have anywhere to lean my fabric uh, which means it is I have to be slightly more accurate with my whole I don't particularly love, but it's a good backup machine. So I'm coming to the end, I'm going to do my little reverse. Take it out from the machine, use the cutter. And there we have it. One piece of bunting all sewn up. Here's our piece of bunting all sewn up, and we need to prepare to turn it right way round. So, we're going to grab a pair of scissors, we're going to trim off the edge. 
you want to try and trim about 3mm out from your line of stitching. And next we're going to grade the seams, which basically means we're starting off here at a narrow point, again about 3mm, and then we're going to go up the seam, reducing the amount that is there. And the reason we do this is it makes for a less bulky uh, point at the end, because here we've got now got less fabric. But the reason we also don't do it from the beginning is it means that you can be more accurate with your sewing, because trying to sew with three millimeter pinpoint precision is quite difficult. Um, not impossible, but just difficult. So we give ourselves a nicer seam allowance and then just trim back. And we use this trimming back, grading back the seams technique on things like collars and different pockets and things. So it's a nice way to practice it. So once we've got it all nicely trimmed back, we turn it right side out. We grab our trusty chopsticks. And the reason we're using chopsticks and not our scissors or our unpick is it has a point, but it is a blunt point. So we're not going to accidentally poke a hole in the bottom of our bunting that we have just sewn. Now we have our triangle all nice and pointy looking at the end, but it looks kind of puffy, like it's kind of going to roll around a little bit. So I'm going to pop across and I'm going to iron this flat, and then it's going to get joined into the actual line of bunting. Once you have one sewn, you can make a whole stack. You'll need quite a few. I've only made a smallish amount today because I don't have too big a space I want to decorate. If you've got a big space, clearly you need lots, so maybe, you know, teach lots of people to sew for you a hand. I also have some bias binding. I'm just using what I've got in my stash. Bias binding is a pre-made um, tape uh, that you can buy at any fabric or craft store. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim up the tops of my bunting, but I'm going to lay it up so that the top of the bunting meets the first fold line of my actual bias binding. I'm just going to pop a pin in there. And what I'm going to do is um, I am going to measure out a set distance using my tape measure. So I'm going to go for about a 12 centimeter gap between each one because I think that kind of is a nice kind of gap. Because it's sort of closed without being too crowded. So I'm going to go along pinning and measuring out for my entire length um, and trimming off my tops as I go and then I'm going to move back to the machine to sew them all together. I've got my bunting and I've pinned it onto the bias binding but it kind of looks a bit like an octopus at the moment. There's kind of bits everywhere. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right over here at the end. I've left a 50 centimeter gap at the beginning, assuming that the bunting is going to get tied onto something to secure it uh, some way. So I'm going to start right up on this end. And the rest of the actual like triangle parts of the bunting are all like laid this way along my desk um, to make it easier to feed into the machine. So I'm going to feed, fold the bias in half. So it looks like this. I'm folding it in half so that the two raw edges are covered. So it's fold to fold. And slip it in underneath my machine. Now don't go right on the end. Come in a little bit. If you go right on the end, the temptation for your machine to suck the bias down in between the feed dogs is high. So start in a little bit from the end and avoid that. It's much easier. <laughs> What you can do is, because you're starting on a narrow piece, hang on to your both of your stitch lines, pull a little at the back, and it helps feed it through your machine. So I'm just continuing to fold and pull it through. You could, of course, pin all of this um, as well. I find it slightly tricky to be undoing the pins as I'm filming because I 
literally just don't have much hand room. I find it a little easier to do this. Okay, so I can see I'm starting to come up to my pin which marks the start. So as I get to the start, I'm just going to take that pin out and fold. I'm just going to put my needle down so I can show you what I'm doing here at the moment. So this is my triangle piece of bunting. It's held with a pin in the center here where my thumb is. What I'm going to do is, this is my bias. I've been folding it in half like this. I'm going to push so that the bunting is on the inside, folding the bias over it. And so it is. I'm going to stop again so I can show you. Take out that pin. So bias, fold your bunting into the middle and fold your bias over the top, enclosing the raw edge. So you're making a little sandwich between all of your layers. doing that between each triangle I have a little gap um, because that way if my triangles aren't right close together I need less triangles to span a greater space just just a little bit more economical okay so I've just started again it's the same technique over and over you have your bias you fold the top over enclosing the raw edge of your triangle Okay, I'm going to continue on with all of my length that goes along my table and then I'm going to come back and show you the finished product. Here's my finished triangle of bunting that you watched me make and cut out and here are all of the other ones that I'd made during the week to actually sort of make my entire line of bunting as it were. So. Mine all happen to be Liberty of London samples from garments that I have made, but you can use anything you want, any colours that you want. A nice cotton fabric is easy to sew, um, but you could cut up your favourite garments, you could make it out of anything that you wanted to. At the moment I have a long string here ready to tie it up to something, and I'm trying to decide whether this is as many pieces as I want, or whether and I can finish off this end or whether I want to actually keep it a bit longer and keep adding to it. So I'll make a decision about that and cut it off. But this is all of our bunting pieces. As always, the pattern is available on the Measure Twice Cut Once website. You can follow the link down below and don't forget to hit subscribe to see what next week's project is. I hope you enjoyed making your bunting. Don't forget to subscribe and get a new project every Friday.